let's talk about how we actually transition the world to sustainable energy. There are changes that we can make on an individual level, like buying an electric car or putting solar panels on your roof. These are objectively good things to do, but it's not something that most people can afford. And even if they could, we'd only be affecting a small fraction of the systemic global energy consumption. It's like recycling and composting, great individual practices that were drilled into my head as a child in the 90s. Reduce, reuse, recycle, reduce, reuse, recycle. They are important fundamentals that have stuck with me for life and yet have done nothing to prevent the 1.6 million kilometer Great Pacific garbage patch from forming on the surface of the ocean. Individual choices cannot solve problems that are happening on a global industrialized scale. Tesla knew this when they first wrote out their mission statement to accelerate the global transition to sustainable energy. They didn't say some hollow marketing BS like put an electric car in every driveway. No, Tesla said they would change energy consumption on a global level. It's something that Elon Musk first started hinting at in his master plan part one, and it's gone on to become the core objective of his master plan part three. Transition the global economy away from fossil fuel and into sustainable energy. The cars are just a front, a flashy, exciting consumer facing product that conceals a fundamental truth. Tesla is an energy company. It always has been and this is the most important business in the world. Okay, so if driving electric cars won't save the world, then how do we do it? Obviously, we need to think bigger and expand our scale. We need to reach the grid level of energy consumption. This is an argument that nihilistic fossil fuel supporters will often try and throw in the face of EV users, saying the electricity to charge your car comes from fossil fuel power generation, so what's the point? And while technically they are wrong, if you run all of the numbers, there will always be a net environmental benefit to an electric vehicle over combustion. They are unfortunately hitting on a fundamental truth the efficiency and sustainability of your grid will always be a limiting factor. Some electric grids are very easy to transition to sustainable energy and have already done so. In the northeastern United States and southern Canada, there is a massive network of rivers that are fueled by the Great Lakes. We harness the energy from that running water to create hydroelectric power generation. But an unlimited supply of running water is a luxury that you won't find in a place like California or Texas or Australia or Hawaii or countless other locations around the world. In places like this, coal-fired power plants have thrived for decades and unfortunately, many of them still do to this day. These power plants have a devastating effect on the local environment, mostly in the form of air pollution. Growing up in Ontario, Canada, we used to have some smog days in the summer around major cities like Toronto. If you're not familiar, that's a combination of smoke and fog, and it refers to that thick brown chemical atmosphere that settles in over the city skyline. You see it over Los Angeles all the time. It dissipated during lockdowns in 2020, but then came right back again along with the return to normal activity. In Ontario, smog days peaked in 2005, with 53 of them recorded in one year. We only have summer weather for about three months if we are lucky, so nearly two-thirds was spent under smog warning. The Ontario Medical Association calculated that this probably led to around 5,800 premature deaths and 16,000 hospitalizations in one year, with a societal economic cost to the province of around $7.8 billion in one year. We haven't had a smog day in Ontario since 2013, so what changed? The province went from five coal-fired power plants in 2001 down to a single plant remaining in 2013, and that last one closed the next year. We transitioned fully to hydroelectricity. We don't even call our utility electricity anymore, we say hydro. You pay your hydro bill every month. If there's a problem with the line, you call the hydro company to fix it. That's not to say that the air quality here is magically fixed, 
global CO2 emissions have continued to rise steadily over the past 20 years. For all the work that is being done on the local scale to solve the problem, the macro environment is worse than ever. But we did get rid of the smog, and that's a change that you don't need to measure. You can see it, smell it, taste it. And what hydroelectricity did for our home here in Ontario, Tesla Energy can do the exact same thing for California. From peaker plant to solar power. In the years since the early 2000s, the fossil fuel industry has brought in their own stopgap measure to try and solve coal-fired electricity. Gas turbine power plants that are fueled by natural gas, which is essentially methane, the simplest organic hydrocarbon, hydrogen atoms that have clung to carbon atoms. Burning methane is significantly cleaner and more efficient than burning coal, but you're still burning carbon and releasing it into the atmosphere just without the heavy soot as a byproduct. These natural gas turbines are typically implemented as peaker plants. They don't operate consistently, they just fire up during periods of high demand and pump extra electricity into the grid. Using technology that we have available today, we can directly replace these peaker plants and totally eliminate the need to build new ones just by using solar power generation and battery storage. This is where Tesla comes into the picture. The sun is a spectacularly abundant source of nuclear fusion energy, and it supplies us with more energy than we could ever use on a daily basis. But the sun is an equally inconsistent energy source. The amount of sunlight that you receive at any given time depends entirely on where you are located on the Earth. So you'll hardly ever experience the maximum output of solar power. And for a large portion of the day, you probably won't experience any sunlight at all, unless you live extremely close to the North Pole in the middle of the summer. Tesla Energy is the solution to this fundamental problem of solar power. If you store that excess energy generated at the peak period of sunlight, then you can use it during the night to maintain the flow of electricity. From here, it only becomes a matter of scale. To generate more solar power, you only need to add more solar panels, and to support those solar panels, you need more energy storage. Nowadays, solar panels are relatively easy to obtain. I can go on Amazon and buy more solar panels than I would know what to do with, but energy storage is much more difficult to come by. This is why Tesla Energy created the Megapack battery, a grid-scale energy storage solution, and that is why Tesla built an entire factory for the sole purpose of producing these mega packs at the highest manufacturing volume they can possibly achieve. Because we can't entirely replace coal and natural gas power plants with solar panels unless we have the mega pack to back them up, or some equivalent product. I'm not trying to say that Tesla is the only company in the world that can build a giant container full of batteries, but for whatever reason, they do seem to be the only company in the world that is in any real hurry to do it at the scale that we're actually going to need in the very near future. We've spent countless videos rattling off numbers about megawatt hours and costs and profit, and that's all great, but what does this actually look like in real life? What is the change that we can see with our own eyes? Let's take a trip to Oxnard, California. Oxnard is an unfortunate name for a very cool place in Ventura County, west of LA. On March 21st, Tesla posted the story of how the Oxnard community had successfully cancelled the construction of a natural gas peaker plant and replaced it with an installation of Tesla Energy Megapacks. When news came out that a brand new fossil fuel generating station would be built in their city, the people told their government, no, find a better way. And that's exactly what happened. So instead of a gas turbine, Oxnard received an installation of 142 Tesla Megapacks, totaling 400 megawatt hours of energy storage that come free from any carbon footprint. And this story can be replicated anywhere in the world where any lazy, uninspired city government has plans to build any more of these natural gas plants. We have a better way, not only better for the environment, but Tesla Megapack installations are faster and cheaper than the power plants. The entire unit is prefabricated at a Tesla factory. You only need to pour a concrete slab for them to drop it on. The cost of maintenance is significantly lower than a gas plant. You don't need staff to run a Megapack. It's fully automated by Tesla software. There is no fuel cost, and Megapack energy is instantly available. 
gas turbines take hours to bring online and get up to speed. This is why the island of Hawaii transitioned their entire power grid to sustainable energy and chose the Tesla Mega Pack as the backbone of their new infrastructure. On September 28th, Elon Musk wrote on Twitter, last coal shipment arrived in Hawaii at the same time as Tesla Mega Pack batteries that will enable 24-7 sustainable energy. Now, obviously this is much easier for a tiny island state like Hawaii than it will be for California, home to 40 million people. It's the most densely populated state in the union. But again, this is all just a matter of scale. And that's exactly what Tesla is doing with their energy business, constantly scaling up to larger sizes and higher volumes. The Megapack 2 XL is so big that it is the largest object that you can transport on a public road without needing a police escort. The production volume of the new Megapack factory in California will increase the production volume of the Megapack by 10 times the rate they were building in their Nevada Gigafactory. This can grow so much larger than a city or an island or a state. Given enough time and consistent growth, Tesla Energy can transition the whole country to sustainable energy. And maybe even if we're really lucky, they change the world. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.